Sister, sister. Super stupid. Rem, Rem. Fuck today. Tomorrow comes movies. Hey, how's it going? My name's Andrew Saleem. I play Red Lotus in the Dark Phoenix. And you're listening to Tomorrow Comes Movies. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies. We are the podcast that talks beyond movies, including video games, not music, comics, television, Star Wars, pop culture, Funko, anime, and much more. As always, your hosts are the Patrick and... Carissa. A reef farewell to Subaru. Episode 103. So what's going on? We are trying out some brand new mics. We have two sets of microphones. Yes. We're going to do one set with this episode. Yes. We're going to do another set with the next episode. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to decide which ones do we like. Are we going to keep all four? Are we just going to keep two? Um, so just bear with us while we're playing around with the audio and the sound. This is our first time kind of playing around with a mixer too. So we're trying to figure all of this out. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So if you want some real behind the scenes magic, Chris and I have actually only used one mic. Yes. For 100 episodes, basically, we've used one mic to the point where it got kind of tired and we knew we needed to do two mics. So now we're trying it out with this mixer and we've been going through a few different takes because the headphones that I was listening to myself talk, it would be a delayed response. So it felt like very chopped and screwed. I'd be like, ooh, like I'm talking real <laughs> slow and I don't really like it. So I took it out. So hopefully this sounds good. But Carissa, how does your mic sound? You know, my mic sounds okay. I have my headphones in and to plug into my mic. Yeah. So I don't hear your audio, but I can still hear you with the microphone, like with my headphones in. Just because I have to keep the volume really low for me to hear you, because I can't hear what you're saying. And then I'm like looking at you dumbfounded, like, what did you just say? Yeah, when I had the headphones on, I could hear you perfectly, delay response myself, and then everything else in this room, you know what I mean? So it was kind of like, it was too much for me. So hopefully we can get it. Hopefully an idea. the audio isn't poop, yeah. well, and you guys are okay with it. And thank you for bearing with us while we're experimenting with the audio. But it's kind of cool not to share a microphone. <laughs> I think so. I think so. So what else do we got here? A brand new con. Con alert. We're going to another convention we've been picked up by. Toon Con, a brand new cartoon and anime convention from the same team behind Power Morphe Con, Carissa. I loved Power Morphe Con. We went to Power Morphe Con last August. And uh, this is happening in Pasadena, California, in our backyard, basically. November 10th, a one-day convention. I believe that is a Sunday. To be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure on that, but Ooh, how excited are you to be? Game. Well, that's okay. How excited are you to be embarking on a brand new convention that we've never been to before? And it's and it's their actual, excuse me, uh, first convention ever. Good news, the Seahawks don't play that day. They they play that Monday night. But I'm actually very. We were so. Uh, if Toon Con's <laughs> listened to this. We were going to go regardless. I don't we're know gonna what you're talking regardless. about. We're going to go regardless. Sorry, Seahawks. <laughs> you're going to be fine. Um, but I'm excited to go to Toon Con. Um, I think it's interesting. These one day conventions I kind of feel like we're like, we're pressured to do make sure we get all of our stuff done within that day and get all of our autographs, any photos, you know, check out the artist alley, all of that good stuff. Um, but I'm excited because they're bringing out one of my favorite voice actors. He voices Tuxedo Mask in Sailor Moon Crystal, Moomin Rider in One Punch Man. Um, I believe he was also Spider-Man, Spider-Man in uh, Disney XD, Robbie Damon. We're Robbie very excited. Damon. Now, fun fact, we did an interview with Robbie Damon and Max Middleman and Ray Chase at Taiyocon earlier in January. And then two months later, we got to see Robbie Damon again. At C2E2 at the Viz Media booth. Yeah, he was like, whoa, you guys went from that convention <laughs> to C2E2. You guys are big time. But yeah, he's always fun to, to hang out with and talk to. And of course, I need to redeem myself by getting oh, a Sailor Moon I am so jealous because you're going to get a tuxedo mask pop sign, but you can test out the paint pen. Mine was on a Sharpie. Yeah, so yeah, we, we've jealous. upgraded from, Shar- or from Sharpies. We moved over to paint pens. Don't want to go back. So yeah, that's not all. Are you a Fairly Odd Parents fan? I like the Fairly Odd Parents. Speaking of that, because they're bringing out the creator of the Fairly Odd Parents, uh, Butch Hartman. There you go. And that's not all. They're bringing out Eric Bowser. Now, his name may not sound familiar, but no. he's the official voice of several Looney Tune characters, including Bugs Bunny, <gasps> Daffy Duck, Marvin the Martian, Pepe Le Pew, and Woody Woodpecker. Is Woody Woodpecker a Looney Tune? 
is Woody Woodpecker. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't think so. I haven't seen Looney Tunes. Well, Maybe. He, you know, yes. He, yeah, he might be. No, I don't know. I don't know. Don't quote Anyways, me for that. Anyways. The whole point is, Woody, he also voices Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> That's all that matters. Um, I just recently picked up a Bugs Bunny at Crunchyroll Expo in yeah, San Jose. And I can get that pop sign. Check it out. I'm Crunchyroll excited. Expo, Pop Hunt, and Hall number two, which just released. So definitely give it a like and definitely um, comment. We like we like the comics. We like to know what you guys think of our videos, if they suck or if they don't. We prefer if they don't. Just throwing that out there. Also, uh, the final guest that I have on here is if you – I believe it's DuckTales. Terry McGovern, the original voice of Darkwing Duck. I haven't seen DuckTales in so long. I know I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know why, but I'm missing like a big chunk of my memory. But I remember watching DuckTales all the time. Didn't you? The fact that you said you're missing a big chunk of yeah. your memory is hilarious because you always give me a hard time for the, my memory problems. I don't remember. I don't know why. Um, DuckTales, I know I watched it, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I have no memory of it. I mean, mm. this is like 20 years ago. I like Darkwing Duck. I, I do remember that. So that's some of the guest lineup. Now, if you're interested in getting more information of the rest of the guests that they're bringing out, or if you want to get tickets, you can visit their website, which is tune-con.com. So it's T-O-O-N-C-O-N.com, tune-con.com. So, let me so do that we one will time. see you <laughs> in Pasadena, California, November 10th at the Pasadena Convention Center. Yes. And you can visit tune-con.com to get that information. We'll also, I don't know why I struggle we'll also on that. link it in our episode description. It will be available in the description of this episode, like Chris was saying, and also I will put it on, I believe it's already on our website, which if you go to our website, tocmovies.com, there's actually a post I did of it. Yeah, so go to our website, tocmovies.com, and there's a post about TuneCon, and in that post, I give a little bit of a, you know, I generalize what's going to be there, which I just said, but if you scroll down a little bit, you get the whole official press release, which includes includes all the information of the guests and just talk a little bit about the creation of TuneCon. Definitely check that out. Thank you so much, TuneCon, for letting us come out. I'm excited for a one-day convention. That means I'm spending all my money pops, one day pops, and I don't pops, have to come pops, back. Pops, pops, yeah. It's pops, pops, hashtag Funko everything. I didn't even say it correctly. Funko over everything. everything. Funko, I can't even say You said correctly. Funko everything. <laughs> Funko everything. Like Not even Funko over everything. It's Funko everything. Oh, my but yeah, God. So definitely uh, check out TuneCon, November 10th, Pasadena, California, in the Pasadena Convention Center. So that is it for TuneCon. But on another note, let's talk about something really interesting here. You remember MoviePass? <laughs> Um, yes, I remember MoviePass. I remember MoviePass. Now, for a lot of you who are like, what is MoviePass? Or for those who do remember MoviePass, a little brief thing here. It was a movie subscription service that birthed the theater, the movie theater subscription thing that is now happening at Regal and AMC, Cinemark. I believe that. I don't know any more cinemas after that. But they all use it now. But MoviePass was one of the first to do it. In 2017, they got pretty big by offering a ridiculous plan which included 999 you could see unlimited movies every day so like every day you could see a brand new movie but it was only for select theaters if i can remember at the time yeah it was only select theaters but it was a big deal 999 you could see yeah, a unlimited movie movies. every day yeah, yeah that was crazy and i believe from there they started to change like the rules and regulations like you um they started to limit you yeah. on which movies you were allowed to see well when that model came out i signed up for it, it got tons oh of yeah of subscribers, including myself, and it lasted till about I think around Mission Impossible Fallout last year. That's when the fallout began for Movie Pass because it, it unfortunately could not sustain its business uh, business model. Excuse me, because I mean, if it's nine ninety nine, you know, it uh, you actually the the you're saving money, but they're spending too much. Money. Yes, um, because you you got to think about it, and it, it worked like a like a regular Visa. Yeah. So every time you run a Visa, the merchant has to pay a fee, and so in the end. Movie Pass was losing money because yeah, but the, we were gaining the our average movie the average yeah. ticket. I want to say um, when we were living in Arizona was what ten fifty. Yeah, or if you went to the first show, it was like six bucks. You know what I mean? Versus day, yeah. out here, it's like the 
tickets can go up to 15 bucks, 20 yeah, bucks, you know what you're doing. 10, um, so in the end, movie pass ends up losing money, but at the same time like you said earlier, we were seeing tons of movies. It was the birth of the of the movie chains creating their own version of movie model, pass. Yeah. Yes, which I adore. Yeah, I love AMC, AMC A list all the way, baby. Regals, because we, three <laughs> movies is not doing it for us. Three we, movies is not doing six. it for us. We're, we're considering of of uh, signing up cuz I love Regal Cinemas. Regal, and then you can go to Edwards and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, so I haven't done Cinemark. I've never been three to movies a week is a lot. And you, you know what's so funny is I talk to people they're like, how do you go to so many movies? It's so expensive. And I'm like, which theater do you go to? Are you, are you, are you a regal person? Have you seen person? my phone collection? You'd be are asking you the same a, thing. Are you a Harkins <laughs> person if you're in Arizona? Are Who's you a DC person? Um, and I, it's, I don't... We're not, we don't get paid to endorse this, but AMC A list is literally the way to go. Yeah, I really like you. You know, I'm not going to advertise it all, but you can see so many different platforms. Definitely check it out if you want to. But but I say for your, your like casual movie goer, it, it actually is a good deal. Even if you see like two, three movies a month. Yeah, if you see, I would think an average person cheaper. sees at least five movies a month. To be honest with you, like one movie a week at best. You know what I mean? If it's if it's blockbuster, yeah. If, if not, you're right, two to three. Well, anyways, going back to Movie Pass, so they could not sustain their model. We were just racking up movie viewings for only paying nine ninety. I think it was nine ninety nine, not nine ninety five. Whatever it was, nine, it was like nine, basically nine, ten nine. bucks a month. Well, after that, I remember summer twenty eighteen. Things started changing where they started limiting the. Well, actually, it was actually back in April of last year when they with Infinity War. Remember, I wanted to watch it again, and then they wouldn't let you re. They wouldn't let you see a movie that you already saw previously the next day. They they said no more repeat viewings, and then I believe around in between April to about July for Mission Possible, they started doing some strange things, including like only limiting certain films, like you yeah. remember. And then um, they switched up prices yes. and plan tiers. Yes. And then the system shut down a few times. Remember that yes. when the system shut down a few times? Oh my and they, God. And they claimed it was an out, it was like a, there was something wrong, but it turned out that they had it was ran them. out of cash. Yeah. So September 14th, it officially shut down. You know what's funny is, September 19th was my one year anniversary of being an AMC A list. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, just, just roughly close to two weeks ago, it shut down officially. They, they said that until they, they might come back with a better model, but for now it has to. You know, I, I think the only way Movie Pass could come back is it, they're not going to be able to be nine ninety nine. Unfortunately, if you think about it, you know you think they can come back. All the theater chains are doing their own thing now. They can never come back. Well, some people <laughs> like to go to different theaters. Like if you think about it, like yeah, like us, like that would be the only like difference. we love indie films, and we we don't always get those <laughs> indie films. And at our local AMC, we have no. to go into you know yeah, different theaters, different yeah. theaters sometimes, or even into like the. Beach cities um, to get some of those early Oscar yes. movies. So some people don't just stick to one chain. Well, remember this other chain that we tried out, Semnia. Remember oh Semnia? God, I remember in Semnia where like you had to pay. You paid a monthly. You could pay. There's different plans, right? You could see like two, three movies. Yeah, maybe six movies or ten movies in an unlimited plan. And we had tried different ones, but the problem with that one was they were they were making us pay if we if we reserve tickets online. We had to pay the convenience fee. Convenience fee, which I thought was really strange. And yeah, they, they would like. They prevented me from using it. Well, they went under before Movie Pass. I think they went under last year. Uh, their demise went down, but they were one that you could see in a different theater. So yes. I don't know yes. if, exactly if Movie Pass could ever come back now because if they couldn't do it, I don't know. I think Movie Pass is done. Movie Pass will go down in history. This is true. Movie Pass will go down in history as the as the company that birthed the theater subscription model for the for the United States because they've been doing this. I heard in different countries like the UK for a long time. Oh really? Yeah, and wow. they, I remember I remember reading comments on like uh, on different articles about like that they're that you know something about this, and somebody was like, "I'm from the UK. They've been doing this for years," and I'm like, "What?" Like what? the thought of that was like, "Yeah, I would totally be down for it." So, oh yeah, Movie Pass will go down in history for starting it, but you know ultimately their history is tarnished by the, just terrible practices. I kept telling you mm-hmm. that they should have raised this up to thirty dollars before this thing got out of control, and they would have been fine. Yeah, but. Well- I mean, no, are you sad about no, Movie Pass going out? No, I'm not sad. But, I'm not sad at all. But either. even even thirty bucks a month unlimited movies is not is not no, it's you not know doable. That they once were charging fifty dollars. See that? Yeah, you know what? Ugh. I don't know. I don't know if no, n- not for unlimited movies. If you think about it, let's say 
They should have done what AMC was doing. Yes. AMC was smart. AMC and Regal and all these these theaters like Cinemark that watched Movie Pass and Semnia fail were like, what can we do this differently? Well, maybe I'll offer three movies like AMC and that works. Same with Regal does it. I think Cinemark does like, I don't know what it is because I don't, I've never been to one. But yeah, they were smart and watched. But Movie Pass. I'm not sad because all the times I wanted to use the damn thing when and I was it went for down it. or yeah, like it wouldn't you, check me in correctly. Yeah, when you got it in, I remember I was so I mad. You got it, it lasted for a couple months, and then after that, it, things start go, going downhill. Actually, I think the first time I used Movie Pass, if I'm correct, we went to go see that movie about the the true story behind the uh, the, the creator of Wonder Woman and that theater that that day. Remember your mom texted oh. you. My that, that was bed bugs yes, in that theater. Yes. Oh in that my god. That we went to. It that wasn't movie the, it was wasn't so the, good. It wasn't the same auditorium. No. But it was that theater. I was so pissed too because we've never rewatched that movie. Just so you know. Yeah, because I'm haunted by those bed so bugs. We're, I freak out. We're easily. in the movie and my phone goes off and I I look at it and it's my mom and she sent me a picture. So I went to my phone. Patrick's like, hey. What yeah, are you I doing? I don't like when people open their and phone. And I'm like, and hold on. It's, it's, it's a sacred experience. Come my on. mom doesn't text me very often, and let alone send me a picture. You don't text me at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I open up my pic, my phone, and I'm like, what the hell is this? That's and it was a time I'm happy and it was that. a screenshot of the theater that we were at, and it was on the news that it had bed bugs. And all I did is I sat up really quick from my chair, and Patrick's like, what's wrong? And I showed him the phone. He's like, get your shit. We're leaving now. And, and I had bought all of these snacks. Oh, yeah. You bought all these So con- I was so mad. And I'm yeah. like, Patrick, we're like 20 minutes into the movie. He's like, I said now. <laughs> yeah. Like, Patrick doesn't yell at me very often. He's like, get up now. Yeah. It was and so, so funny because um, <laughs> we, I kicked the door to the exit that goes out to the parking lot, which is going through the theater. <laughs> And I'm like huffing and puffing because the reason why, let's just go back just a little bit more, was I was working a security job and somebody was fired. So they had some like alternate people working uh, security. But this one particular person was working there for a while. And I remember coming in because I would work the graveyard shift. I came in and they told me that they found a bed bug. And I, they show me, they showed in the trash can, it's smushed and there's blood. And they're like, well, I don't know. I don't have them, but I know I got my phone fixed recently. It must have came out of my phone. I freaked out that whole shift. I went sit in that chair. I disinfected everything. I was all freaked out. I didn't even drive the car. I was so, oh, it just bothered me. So this was like, I, I would think, Chris, what was this? Like a couple weeks later. Yeah. So then I freak out. So we're in the, we're in the parking lot. I'm like, we're in the go. parking lot. And he's like, all grossed out and mad. And he walks to a, a car. That looks very similar to mine. He opens the door. He sits down. He looks. I'm like, I'm like, I'm standing outside the car. Like, this isn't my car. He's like, oh shit, Mike, this isn't my car. Get your shit. Let's go again. (laughs) I'm kicking doors. Yeah, I freaked out. I was like, whoa, this is not our car. As soon as we get home, he literally makes me strip at the front door. He's like, give me your shoes. Give me your flannel. I'm like, he's like, I gotta wash the hot water. I'm like, don't wash my flannel in hot water. It's gonna shrink. Yeah. I don't give a shit, Chris. I'll well, buy you a new one. They don't do well in heat, so I washed everything. Oh. I think I washed our shoes, too. He's like, go shower. Yeah, luckily, we didn't get it, but it was so no. funny because I knew somebody that worked at that movie theater that I had worked with at a different movie theater, and I had asked them off the record in text, like, hey, hey, man, you got, bu- you got bed bugs? Not true. And the next day, confirmed that they had went undergone some um, bug spraying. But yeah, I've never went to that theater. And that was my favorite theater for years. For Chris years. Will tell you. years. So it was heartbreaking. I couldn't get him to go to any other theater except that theater. It was a great theater. And, and I want to say, what, it's been like two years <laughs> since... We went to that theater? Yeah. No, it's like three years. Three years? Yeah. Thanks to whoever, whoever bought bed bugs to that and ruined my favorite theater because I had to go to this other theater, which I thought was... It wasn't very good. It was the same chain, but whatever. Anyways, Side movie note. pass. Movie pass. Movie pass movie was pass tainted bed in bed bugs. bugs. Yeah, for me. <laughs> so overall, I mean, I'm not really sad about no, movie pass. It because, is what it is. You know, just the fact that Chris and I were paying money and we weren't able to watch movies. Chris is like, I'm getting ripped off. And then I remember she canceled and then they still charged you. Remember that? Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. So I just wish that movie pass would have sustained themselves by instead of trying to play catch up. Really just sat down and was like, what can we do to make this work? So hearing them that they ended on September 14th, which is just a few days ago, is pretty shocking to me considering that I thought MoviePass died last year. Krista said they were dead last year. And apparently <laughs> they didn't die until this year. So, yeah. So, Arriva Derche, man. We're fine with AMC's A-List. Yeah, thanks. Take your bed bugs with you. 
<laughs> but that is uh, that is it for what's going on. Are you ready to get in this episode? Let's go. So let's talk movies. And of course, I want to say this every time we do an episode moving forward is if you want to stay in the conversation with us, look in the description of this episode because I put in links for the Funkos that we talk about, trailers or anything that needs you to click on it to look at it or you know i don't know basically if, if you, you want, want to research yeah. more what we're talking if about not, then don't i mean but i like it's all in the description of the episode i'm actually thinking about abandoning it because i don't think anybody really looks at it so i might stop doing that but what do you think she wants me to abandon it i can tell like in in your eyes i see it you're like <laughs> just get rid of it if they want to look at it they go look for in it. in my themselves. eyes yeah you so can read into my soul i i can it's a very bad soul by the way <gasps> Yeah, All right, so, well, let's talk movies. You got some movie news for me? Let's talk about Jurassic World 3. Big news dropped yesterday. I'm excited about the news coming out of Jurassic World 3. Big news. Original actors from Jurassic Park are going to be embarking on the hopefully final installment in the Jurassic Park franchise, Jurassic World 3. So you've got Jeff Goldblum, Chris. Dr. Ian Malcolm. Sexy, sexy Goldblum, Dr. Ian Malcolm. Sam Neill. Dr. Alan Grant. And Lord, Lord Dern. Dern, yeah. Dr. Ellie Lord Sattler Dern. have been confirmed by Steven Spielberg's company Amblin Entertainment to return for Jurassic World 3. Now, last year, Fallen Kingdom came out. It, and, that was last year? Yeah, it was last year, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, to sum it up, I well, I can sum it up for I myself. I don't even remember. I didn't like All it. All I remember. Is I didn't like it. Spoiler. Is the dinosaurs got released at the end. Yeah, they broke free in the Roman. That's it. That's all yeah, I remember. And I was like, what kind of ending? Is-? Like, this is the worst possible scenario for us. And I'm just like, what? The- what is this? I didn't. I'll be 100% honest. I'm not really a big fan of Jurassic World. The I love film. Jurassic Park. Love the first Jurassic Park. The second one's okay. The third one's not bad. Jurassic World. The first one was okay. I didn't like Jurassic World. I didn't. Li- and I don't like Fallen Kingdom. I did not like two that I can't even remember. How it went. I don't think I like any of the characters. Like, that's what it comes down yes. to. Yeah, I don't like any yes. of the characters. Yes, 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 yes. I like the dinosaurs. Like, when the dinosaurs were, were doing their thing, I was up for it. But, yeah, overall, it was it's ba- it's basically been, excuse me, a disappointment for me in the Jurassic World franchise. But Jurassic World 3 could change that with bringing the original actors. I'm, I'm actually very excited about this. Yeah, so Amblin Entertainment did a whole thing. I read it. So, they're coming back. But there is really no mention of whether or not, is this going to be cameo like for instance jeff goldblum was in fallen kingdoms uh the film from last year he was only in for like a cameo yeah they basically very, showed very his minimal. whole performance in the trailer in the trailer yeah so we don't we don't really know i'm hoping that it I, is, ho- I hope they have a bigger involvement in the film i want it to be a sizable role like yes. i want them to be involved i don't yes. want them to be like hey we're here we're gone or they get ate by somebody i i, yes. I, I need them no i need laura Dern to run like she did in the first draft okay <laughs> i need goldblum to look sexy almost all his shirt in this ridiculous hairstyle i need that and i also need uh i need sam neil dr alan grant wondering why he's still in this when he should be gone like i love those characters so this is exciting but that's not all. Jurassic Park just released, or excuse me, Jurassic World, excuse me. Jurassic World released a short film called Battle at Big Rock, which was directed in secrecy from what I've read by Colin Trevorrow, who directed the first Jurassic World, but he's co-wrote the second one and the original Jurassic World. So he's coming back to direct, but he did a short film, Chris, Battle at Big Rock. What did you think of that? You we know, just saw it. It's like eight I'm, minutes. I'm not going to lie. I think I liked it better than Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I think that I like that short film better than the first two films of Jurassic World. Um, this this uh, is set up uh, at a campground. And there's a bunch of RVs around. And uh, there's a family. There's a dad and a daughter. And he's grilling. And he's like, it, I think he burnt the food a little bit. And so I you, can't remember his name. He's from Moonlight. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's where he's from. Yeah. He's from uh, Moonlight. Audrey Holland. What I was, I was trying Audrey to remember Holland's where did actress. I see yeah. this guy. I'm like, he looks so familiar. Moonlight. Oh, yeah. Moonlight. Anyways. um, So... We see this family in this RV, and there are three kids, and they're just eating dinner. They're having a conversation, and then um, all of a sudden, you know, they're like, okay, how was your day kind of thing? And then the daughter's like, I shot a crossbow. And they're like, what? So he's yelling at his neighbor, and they look out the window. All of a sudden, there's nobody there. And all of a sudden, it's like, 
quiet and crickets like what what you know you, like you feel that suspense you know what i mean like it's like it's building like oh my god where, where did where did everybody go you only have eight minutes come on man let's get into it that's what i kept saying <laughs> with all. you only have eight minutes let's go like seven six let's um go. so all of a sudden dinosaurs pop up what, what dinosaurs are they? i don't you know i'll be honest with you i, th- I thought it was triceratops, triceratops. Yeah, thank triceratops you Tri- pops up. triceratops 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 i don't know what i don't know several tops <laughs> Is what she's trying to tell you. I don't know what that means. Triceratops, Triceratops show up. Triceratops, and Triceratops. you know, like the family's like trying to be quiet and stuff, and all of a sudden the T Rex pops up, and then that's when like shit hits the fan. I don't think that was a T Rex though. That was another what was similar it? version of a T Rex. I don't remember. It was in Fallen Kingdom. Remember? Oh, it was that. That, that was the one that kept chasing them. The yeah. hybrid one. It looked like the hybrid. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. Anyways. The kid starts crying, and then all of this chaos starts happening. It was actually, I actually really liked it for an eight-minute short film. Yeah, you, you kept telling me that. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was enjoyable. I, I still don't know if that's the Jurassic Park that I, or that I don't know if that's what I envisioned Jurassic World, but that was a little bit better than what I saw in Fallen Kingdom, and it was only eight minutes. Though I think that it's a little strange, but it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea that what happened at the end dinosaurs, of Jurassic yeah. World so too. What happened in Fallen Kingdom is now the repercussions are deep. So it looks like this family and a lot of other people have migrated to somewhere really far, and yet the dinosaurs have still shown up. Found them. So that was really interesting. Of course, at the end of the thing, they show humans and dinosaurs interacting in several different scenarios, including a wedding where they throw up doves, you know, and pterodactyls are eating them. Or a shark jumping up to eat a a seagull, but then gets ate by that big water uh, dinosaur. So I mean, that's kind of freaky. It's it's very freaky. And or like a a stegosaurus in the middle of a of a road off a bridge, you know, like a like a narrow road off of like a like a mountain, and that guy gets almost gets killed by the spikes, and yet he falls down and dies. So overall, I mean, I'm I'm kind of like, huh. I mean, it's intriguing. I got to see Jurassic World three. But it's it's one of those films that I'm not like really you're not like super for. hyped. I don't for. care. Like I don't really care about Jurassic World anymore because I feel like they just haven't lived up to the hype. That's that's how I feel. You know, them bringing back Goldblum, Neil, and Dern that is intriguing. That's what I want. Okay, yeah, I'm all in. Now you got my attention. Now some other things that are going to be happening with Jurassic World three is we knew that Colin Trevorrow would come back. He he admitted. That he was not coming back for the sequel, that he would take a break. But yeah, he he passed it on to another director. I think it was I don't remember J J Bayonia. I don't know. But anyways, Fallen Kingdom was not any better. But he wrote that one. He co-wrote it. So this one he is actually co-writing with another screenwriter. But he's coming back to direct this, just like how J J Abrams is coming back to direct to direct the, yeah Star Wars episode. So, nine. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest Colin Trevorrow fan. Like, I liked his original indie film, Safety Not Guaranteed. Everything else, I'm I'm good. Like, is I, that the I, one with Keira Knightley? No, uh, Aubrey Plaza. Oh, Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. Which one was the one with Keira Knightley? Uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what Keira Knightley? What? I'm thinking of a different movie. Yeah, you're thinking of a different movie. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Because, I mean, do you like Colin Trevorrow? Are you excited for Jurassic World 3? I don't know if I'm excited. Excited for Jurassic World three. I think there's a like um, there's a spark of interest because, yeah, because those three are coming back exactly you know? because the original three are coming back but for the film. Be, is it gonna be a sparkler or is it gonna be a real firework? That's exactly. Be, yeah, they, exactly. Ooh, yeah. I like that analogy, it's Patrick. Be a sparkler. That's the way it looks like. <laughs> um, if it's the way Goldblum was in the second one, it's gonna be a sparkler. If if they can kind of bring them in and, and have a decent role in the film, it could be a firework. Yeah, I don't know what Jurassic World has to do to get my, like, get me excited. Like, I think they have suffered with stories. I feel like it's hard to do another Jurassic Park or Jurassic World because I don't know what, what left you could do with the dinosaurs. I mean, they finally brought the dinosaurs to I mean, us, which is probably the worst thing. Like, when they saw that raptor, like, I know we're going to spoil this, but when we saw that raptor in Fallen Kingdom, I remember I looked over at Chris, I'm like, this is game over. Like, why are we celebrating that they're excited that they're liberated? We're dead. Yeah. We can't survive against a raptor. No. No. We no. can't use gymnastics like in Lost World and kick some <laughs> velociraptor's ass. Like, we can't no. do that. So I cannot run one either. I'd be dead. I'm yeah, just going to lay on the floor. But maybe those three coming back can help fix the problems. Or of- maybe they can, like, bridge a gap. Because I think the thing that, has, that Jurassic World has suffered is... You're not invested in the characters. Or at least I'm not. 
you're not invested in the characters. Universal and all them, they're invested, obviously, because you know, I'm they- not. There's there, there's no emotional connection to these characters. I mean, even when they brought the two brothers in, Jur- in Jurassic World, the first one. Bro- oh, the young kids? The young kids. Yeah, I can remember. There was no that. emotional connection to them versus the young kids in the fir- in Jurassic Park. Well, if they can actually use the original three actors, Goldblum, Neil, and Dern, and they can utilize them to kind of bridge, maybe Force Awakens it to kind of close this out, like what Rise of Skywalker is looking like it's going to do, I'm up for it. But if they just show up and one of them dies, I'm done with this movie. It's just because- I Are you going like, to like get up and walk out of the theater? Yeah, I'm going to get up. No, I'll finish. I've never been one of those people that gets up and walks out That's a lie. We have got up and walked out of a movie once. Yeah. No, no. I meant like- Yes, we've walked out of a movie, but if I'm reviewing a movie, I'm, I have never walked out of a movie that I that I that I'm going to review. Now that I podcast, no, it's a little different because at the end of the day, you shouldn't even walk out. No one should walk out of movies. We only walked out of that movie because we snuck in when we were young and hey, realized that movie was that not on, very good. Don't Nobody we saw that? it. So we saying that? Yeah, I said it. So we were we were young. <laughs> Jurassic World three. We're gonna, you know, like I said, I'm gonna watch it. I'm I'm a little more intrigued because they're back in it, but at the same time, I feel like um, I just feel like Jurassic World's been a mess. I'm the minority in this because of the fact that everyone loves this franchise. Like Chris and I have talked to many people, and they're like, "What are you guys talking about? Like this is great." And I'm over here like, "It's bad. Like it's it's bad. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't know about you, Chris. I just I've always been real indifferent with them. I know because you know me. I, as soon as we get out of the movie theater, I'm over over here. I remember arguing about Fallen Kingdom about something. It has something to do with them letting those dinosaurs be there. And I remember you were like, you really did not like this movie. <laughs> you really <laughs> didn't. Like, tell us how you really feel, Patrick. But I'm not dissing, like, they shouldn't make any more Jurassic World. I just want them to they make... They shouldn't make any more Jurassic World after Well, after this. this one, I don't think they should. But I feel like if... Let's go out with a bang. Let's make a really good story. Let's bring the legacy characters And then back. let it go. Yeah, and then that's it. Like, there's no need to make Jurassic World 4. Even though I think they announced 4. Or they, oh, really? they they may have dated a maybe I may, I might be wrong. I don't okay, know. Okay, hopefully you're wrong. Anyways, anything else? No. Can we just get sexy Goldblum back in this? That's all we yes. if they do that, I'll be satisfied with the movie. Like that will at least add a little spark. That would be it. funny actually. But that is it for the movie news. Now let's move over to anime. We're gonna actually review an anime series. It's been a while, but been I'm excited while. about this one because I've seen this one twice. Chris has seen this once because I rewatched it with her. ReZero, starting life in another world. We're going to review season one, as always, you know, with any of our movie reviews. It's spoiler-free, spoiler section, final thoughts and rating, but a synopsis for this. Subaru Natsuki unexpectedly arrives in a new world where he meets a friend, but they both get murdered afterwards of meeting each other. But Subaru awakens to the same day as it repeats every time he dies. That's not really spoiling it because it kind of... Yeah. So, Krissa... Um, right off the bat, this first episode kind of reminded me of Rising of the Shield Hero. I knew it. I knew it. Um, I knew it. And the similarities between the two is are both of our main characters, Subaru for this show, and now for me for Rising of the Shield Hero. Yes. They're both summoned to another world. Yes. The only difference is now for me has a little bit of a better head on his shoulders. Yes. Where Subaru <laughs> thinks Super he's nasty. he's summoned by a very beautiful girl and he in- has all these enhanced powers. But is he summoned? You know, that's, that's a million dollar question without spoiling um, that. But definitely this this show really did pique my interest. Again, it kind of reminded me of the Rising of the Shield Hero just a little bit. But it also kind of reminded me of that Tom Cruise movie. Uh, what is it? Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Or Even though live, they change the title. Live, to... die, and repeat. Yeah, it's Edge of Tomorrow. Because we get to see Subaru. Or Groundhog's Day. Or Groundhog's Day. Ooh, that's a good yeah. one. I think about that. Ooh, nice one, Patrick. We get to see Subaru go through all these trials and tribulations, and it's a live, die, repeat kind of thing. It's like, what? It Each episode leaves you hanging on to what's going to happen next. Why? And you have all these questions. Why was he summoned? What is his purpose? Why were you named after a car? Uh, what's going to happen <laughs> next? And he's taking all this information he gathers after each event and trying something different or trying something the same. And so I really did like this show. There are a couple of characters for me that, that stood out. But overall, I feel like it quickly, gr- this show quickly grows into a thrilling story, but it also sets up a very engaging universe. And there's a lore that you want to know more about Subaru and the city of, or the town of 
like Gunica is where Gunica, it's. yeah. But overall, definitely a surprising show for me. Because Patrick was obsessed with this show. Yes, if and, you saw our Animanga Hall, yeah, yes, I was so excited to meet them. when we went yeah. to Animanga in Pomona in early August, um, they had the voice actors there. The whole cast, actually. Yeah, the whole main cast. Yeah, it was really And good. Patrick was fanboying Didn't even care about out. Pops. No, he was just like so freaked out and Got a really fanning cool prince, out. Yeah. And so after the after the the convention, I decided to watch the show, and I'm like, as most things, it takes a while for me to get into. But after like that third, fourth episode, I'm like, oh, I want to know more about this. But overall, I definitely think you guys should check out. That's all I can say in my spoiler free section. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Patrick. Well, for me with ReZero, this is arguably like my favorite anime series I've seen this year. I really was hooked on this show. A lot of it has to do with the main character, Super Natsuki, because he's just... He's such just like interesting character because he's something that I'm not. Like he's very confident, even though he we know that he's he doesn't know what's going on. But it's such an interesting concept. I mean, he ends up in this random world. He doesn't know how he got there. He meets this this friend of his, this you know this beautiful girl named Amelia, and he wants to help her. And then you know something happens. They die. He has to repeat the day, and I couldn't ever like figure out when he was going to die. So I thought that was really interesting. And I love the different storylines that happened with this season. But yeah, Super was one of my favorite characters. But this show did a really good job of establishing other characters in this, including Amelia, Rem and Rom, which Krista loved Rem a lot. You know, you sister, have... Sister, sister. Yeah, you have Crochet, you have Beatrice, you have... Um, I'm trying to remember. There's one... Puck. Puck, that's it. That's it. There you go, Puck. So I really like this show because, it, you know, Natsuki, uh, Super Natsuki is kind of like us. Like, I, I imagine myself in this world the same way he is. I don't think I would be as smart enough to be like, you know what? I'll find a friend. Like, I just feel like that's that's who, that's who how I would be in this world. Like, I wouldn't know what I'm doing. But it's, it's really funny. Like, the show's really funny. And also, you know... It gets a little sad. You know, you're happy. I mean, you kind of feel a lot of different things here. Heartbreaking. Subaru is a driving force. Like I said, you re- – like, I don't know what Chris is talking about. Like, I got hooked on the first episode because, you know, like, I'm like, what is going on? Why did this day repeat? You know, and then I liked how, like, I was concerned with the show without really, like, spoiling. I was concerned with the show that there would be some fatigue with it with, okay, they got to repeat the day. But they did a really good job of, like – Without really like spoiling it, is if if he died, you know, if he died in a scenario when the next episode would come in, it wasn't something that was entirely like verbatim, like not at all in my opinion. But you know, that's for interpretation. But I felt like it was it was unique enough each experience, even though he was trying to obtain the same goal was to make it to the next day, and I I, I really liked it. So, and uh, you can't go wrong with the fact that with this show, I mean, it was. Uh, a few different there's a few different storylines that I really enjoyed, but I, I would really say that the first half was really my favorite part of it. But overall, it was a strong season to the end, even though I preferred the first half, maybe because I was more t- invested in that whole live die repeat kind of thing. But that's it for my spoiler free section. So we'll move over to spoiler section. So if you have not seen ReZero, it's available on Crunchyroll. It's a streaming site. We just went to Crunchyroll Expo. You should definitely get it. It's affordable, and you can watch tons of anime, whether you want to watch a sub or dub. Check it out. So I'll give you like three seconds. And away we go. Okay. We are now in the spoiler section of ReZero, life, starting life in another world. So going back to our main character, Subaru, I think the thing that makes Subaru so interesting is the fact that he was summoned to this world and shortly after dying the second time he discovers that he has a power in a sense called return by death yes the interesting thing though is he can't talk to anybody about it he has this witch that has some control over his body and he's trying to figure out how to survive and how to save everyone else. And he falls in love with this beautiful half-elf Amelia. (laughs) It's always a (laughs) half-elf. You know, anime. It's always something, right? And he ends up getting terribly injured and is brought back to the manor with yeah, Amelia. Yeah, once he gets part that, you know, gets past that first part, right? I mean, you're like... And then that's when we get introduced to the rest of our cast. We have two sisters that are maids. Yeah, Rem and Rom. Rem and Rom. Sister, sister. Rem, Rem. 
That's how they talk in the show. <laughs> yeah, they're constantly insulting um, Subaru. Like, they don't like him. And then, like, one of them, Rom, doesn't even call him by his real name. They call him Barasu. Barasu. But they'll say, like, for instance, like, Chris, try to, try to do it and see. Sister, sister. I don't oh, know what to say. I'll do it. Sister, sister. Subaru is stupid. Rem, Rem. He's not that bright. Like, they, they would say something <laughs> like that. It would be that kind of, like, and, and it's pretty funny. Like, you're, like, dying because it's, like, the, he can never catch a break with those two. But pretty much, you know, the the story, you know, we deal with, there's love interest, there's, you know, allies, there's foes, and... Frenemies, you know? We get to see Subaru mature and grow into a leader. In the beginning, he's very immature, and... He's gun, he's, he's gun, you know, he's gun, he's gun crazy, he's gun ho he crazy. He does some he questionable things where you're like... Subaru, it's why just, are you doing this? I know you like her, but stop trying to impress me. Like, <laughs> we get it, dude. Like, but you know, I mean, he's a young guy. He's a young guy. He's summoned to a world. He plays a lot of video games, so he thinks he's part of a video game. He, he literally thinks, like, in that first episode, he thinks he's in a video game where he's like, I've been summoned to a different world. He's like, that means I have a ton of XP. But and when he, he tries, dies, yeah, that, he, that's he dies he, very gruesome. That was a reality check for him. He's like... That hurt. And then he's like, why am I in this world? But the one thing that I I didn't, I mean, the one thing I didn't care for is I felt they tried to shove too much in this first season. Yeah, but that seems like to be a lot of things with anime. Like, yeah, yeah, but this one was a lot, though. Mm. This one was a lot. Same with Shield to where To where, <laughs> no, that's different. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> we and reviewed the, Shield Hero on a previous episode. She really loves that. I, I I think Rising of the Shield Hero was my favorite new anime of the year. But I did like... He took off his glasses. Like, excuse what? me? What? Um, but I think the thing with this one is they try to shove too much in the first season to where we end up not seeing Subaru's love interest for, what, six episodes? There was a few episodes, yeah. It wasn't six. You're over-exaggerating. Okay, I'm not. But we also get to see Subaru develop a relationship with one of the maids, with Rem. Yeah, even though they constantly barrage him with ins- insults. <laughs> but she ends up seeing that he is a good man and he does have good intentions. And yeah. <laughs> he won't leave someone behind. Yeah, even though they had uh, they attack him and they make they insult him, he grew to love them as he kept repeating days. So they wouldn't remember some of the things that he went through, but he, he remembers all the good stuff, which is interesting. I, and I think like, for I me, you. um, one of the things that I really liked about this season is I love the relationship between Subaru and Rem. And one of the most heartbreaking episodes for me is where Rem confessed her love to Subaru and all of the wonderful things of how their life could be. Even though she's like, you're, you're not really fully equipped for things. But I'll make it work. Yes. Yeah, yeah it was pretty funny. What and a, in the proposal. end, but in the end, he doesn't want to be with her. He's in love with Amelia. Which, like, that that's what it is. Chris was so mad. I was like, so mad. Team Rem, not Amelia. Yeah, I'm like Team Rem all the way. It's Amelia. <laughs> um, but I mean this this show is very, very, very interesting with the with the dark magic. And yeah. and even even like the last episode, you're it, I'm not saying it's it's a cliffhanger, but I'm definitely like, it's like, (gasps) what just happened? Yeah, I I would say, you know, I would agree to Carissa to a little extent that the storylines I felt in the first half of the season were a lot strong, were a lot more stronger than the second half. But that's because I think they kind of threw us a curveball by introducing Subaru outside of his his affection for Amelia, and then dealing with, like, for instance, helping others out. So, but it kind of established a lot of other characters like Crochet, you know, and like um, Julius and Reinhardt. So I, I kind of liked it, but yeah, I, I still want Super with Amelia. So I, at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the season. I, thick and through, I think the season was fantastic. You know, I know everyone loves Shield Hero. And I'll be honest with you, I really love Shield Hero, but I love ReZero. I think I love Shield Hero because it deals with an underdog and rising to the occasion to where I feel like this show, you start to tolerate and then like Subaru. Subaru is not a very liked character in the beginning, at least for me. I'm looking at him, I'm like, you're a total dumbass. (laughs) <laughs> hey man, I like Subaru. But it's but it's true. I feel like in the beginning, but this is great character depth and growth for him. In the beginning, he's not a liked character. 
You don't really, I mean, at least I didn't. I, I, didn't, I didn't have any connection for him. <laughs> We had different experiences. We definitely did. Yeah, I liked him. But I, I feel like throughout the throughout the season, you get to see him grow mm-hmm. and mature and not be selfish or obsessive. Yes, I, I would agree with you to some of that, yeah. But I think the other thing is, I feel like with his love interest, Amelia, I don't feel like we got a lot of character development with her. I feel like we got more character development with Rom and even Rem versus her. She still has this lore about her. Mm-hmm. What... Besides her beauty, what attracts Subaru to Amelia? What is that special thing about her? And I, and I think that's why I'm kind of like, eh, mm-hmm. is we didn't get a lot of her backstory. But what do you think? What is your review? Like I was saying earlier in my spoiler-free section, you know, this season I preferred the first half a little bit more. And a lot of it had to do with, like, I like Subaru's early adventures of him trying to get uh, help Amelia get her insignia back and then meeting uh, Felt. And then Rom, and then, you know, him getting to that mansion. And I love that banter between Rem and Rom constantly barraging him with insults to the point where, you know, we I like that first half of that storyline. But it was nice to see Subaru get some action, you know, end up becoming that person that he that that he hoped that Amelia would see him as as a brave, brave knight that could win her heart. So I did like that when he would take down the white whale. I think it was the was it the white whale? Yes. Yes, I think it was. You know, I know it was, a, it was a giant whale, so yeah, that was really cool. But um, yeah, like a lot of the highlights for me was was the humor. Like I love Rem and Rom, these two twin maids who just kept giving backhanded comments and digs at Subaru. It, you know, had me laughing so much. I mean, I, I kept looking over with Chris a few of them because I had seen the show previously, and Chris was dying. Like Subaru's expense, you know, n- nothing was like held because we were dying at his expense. And then I felt like though the season didn't. Like the second half was not my favorite. I felt like this, this, you know, this show did a really good job of featuring different situations. You know, with anime, you know, uh, we're new to it, but yeah, they do feature a lot of storylines in one season. So, you know, I, I felt like the end of the season was very, you know, they tidied up a lot of things, especially things that happened in the first half. And, you know, I just, I guess for me, I got too wrapped up in his early adventures with Amelia, Rem, and Rom. So I was kind of like taken back, like Chris was saying, that, you know, when some parts were like, ah, oh, kind of, where the hell's Amelia at, you know? So, but I felt like the series overall was good at wrapping things up. It was very entertaining because the humor is good, but then you got some action, you know? We got to see Subaru kick some ass, and then we got to see him get his ass kicked, you know? So, I, I really like this show because of the fact that, you know, I truly think that I, I don't know how well I would do in this world. I don't know about you, Chris. I don't know how well I would do in this world, but I feel like I would, I think I would be a lot more like Super. I think I would fail, constantly fail, constantly die, and hopefully figure my way out. But this show did a really good job because like I was saying in my spoiler free section, I was worried, you know, with the fatigue, like the first episode, he dies. I'm like, oh, they're going to go through the whole part. But every time he, like, every time he kind of figures something, like after he died the first time, he thought he could switch things up. It didn't go so well for him. Like he, no. he died even faster. So I <laughs> yeah. like that they they kind of they kind of threw you for a loop. They kind of made it um, interesting to the point where you're like, even if he switches something up, Subaru, I don't know if he's capable of getting to the next day still. So I, I really like that aspect, which carried on throughout the whole season because you know Subaru, like like I would think for myself, made several mistakes that he was not able to get through. You know the next storyline without dying a few times. And I like that one thing about Subaru was Chris was saying his maturity. He kind of figured it out. What do I got to do to make it to the next day? You know, and I don't know how he, how he did it, but a lot of, a lot of the Rem and Rom's, you know, roasting, I would have been sick of him, but he grew to love them because he saw the goodness of what they did, helping him read and learn the language of, of um, Lagunia and learn how to be a maid or a butler, excuse me. A and butler just, and yeah. learn how to cook and yeah. clean and not while, cut his finger. While them trying to kill him at one point. So, yes. yeah, it's a really good show. Like I said, if you're looking for a really good, you know, a, a healthy mix of ridiculous humor, but some really interesting character development along with, uh, you know, the hopeless romantic of myself. I really wanted to see him with Amelia. I kept cheering him on, even when I wasn't confident in Subaru. You know, I was still hoping that he would figure it out. So that is it for my spoiler uh, section. And let's go into final thoughts and rating. Final thoughts. Um, definitely Live, Die, and Repeat is a great show to check out. 
Joke, joke, Oh, joke. I was like, what are you talking joke. about? ReZero, Life in and Starting Life in Another canceled. World. <laughs> start this over again. It's definitely a good show. Definitely, definitely check it out. Um, we didn't dive into that many spoilers, even in our spoiler no. free, just because I want people to check out the show. I think it's a really good show. Um, I have a newfound love of anime, and this was a great Oh, yeah. I mean, I, love, I really love show. the series. And I took a chance on it. Um, And... We'll be talking about season two very, very, very soon. Yes, that's what's exciting about it. We can talk about season two. Um, but rating, what do I want to give this? I'm going to give this a 90. 90, okay. Just because Subaru should be with Rem, not Amelia. Oh, my goodness. All right, so Team for my Rem. final thoughts of ReZero starting life in another world, season one, I love this series. I truly believe this will, maybe at the end of the year when we do a recap of things we watched, this could be my favorite anime series, even though I really loved Rising of the Shield Hero, but this is a series that I, I think it's a little different because if we were going to this convention, I didn't know anything about this anime. I took a chance, and I got swept up and i love this series i can rewatch it all pun intended and never get bored or die like subaru but i feel like the story has been done before you know with the whole dying and repeating but to me this was a really refreshing take and overall i just had a lot of fun with this with this series like i i, I always wanted to go to the next episode i, I couldn't wait i i'm not really I don't like to binge, but I, I had a hard time not binging. But at the same time, watching again with Chris, I was able to pick up a lot of different things, and it's just a fun series. Like if you're if you want to laugh, if you want to really get invested with some characters, and you're like like you know, I'm talking about like Game of Thrones invested. I was in this is a great series, and then bring on season two because I cannot wait. So I would I, my rating for this would be, and this is pretty modest for me because I really love this series, a ninety two. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's the greatest anime series, like you know what I mean. But I, I, to me, it was such a great series. And if you don't watch anime, this might be an interesting anime to watch anyway because it's really different. Like it's not mm-hmm. like any other anime that I have seen so far. And I'm still early in my anime, you know, my anime forte, I guess. But that is it for ReZero: Starting Life in Another World season one. It is available on Crunchyroll. I will link. Crunchyroll's website, if you're interested in doing it, you can do a free trial. And uh, I would recommend, you know, doing the uh, paid model because then you don't have to watch commercials, you know. It's like anime. Think of Crunchyroll's anime Hulu. But that is it for anime. Let's move over to one of our segments, which is take a stroll down Superheroes Alley, which is everything superhero related. Chris, I got a good one for you because I know you always question some of the ones that make it on here. But... <laughs> We're still catching up on D23, Marvel, San Diego Comic-Con stuff. So we're going to actually talk about San Diego Comic-Con stuff. The Marvel panel, Kevin Feige revealed a lot of Phase 4 stuff, but he revealed a film that is in development, which a lot of us were like, where is this at? Like the whole time I was, you know, when I was getting all the news about San Diego, I was like, where is this film at? This has got to be one of those films that's going to be one of the next things. No, unfortunately it is not because Kevin Feige just – briefly teased that Black Panther 2 is on its way. It's in development, but gave no release date at the time. And it's been rumored for a long time that Namor the Submariner will be in this film. Whether or not that's true or not, I hope it is. But Chris, uh, I mean, San Diego Comic-Con, I mean, that was one of the few films I thought would easily be, uh, you know, one of the first things that gets brought up, we're going we're gonna to do Black Panther in like two years, right? I mean, I don't know about you. I was like, we're going to do Black Panther in two, two years. I'm actually surprised that they did not fast track Black Panther 2, just because of the success of Black Panther. Yeah, and, not the, and only, the culture of significance. Yes, of it, not, yeah. but not only at the box office, also at the Academy Awards. Yeah, it was a big awards player. You know, it didn't win much, but it, it was a big but awards still, player. But still, what it was, a it was an big you know? honor. So, I, I'm, I'm seeing all of that momentum, all of that hype. I'm actually surprised that there was no announcement for it. Like, there's no fast tracking it. I think this is one of the projects that they should fast track. But at the same time, we're still waiting for Doctor Strange. That's, that's going to be a five-year wait. So, at D23, after giving no release date, just saying it's in development, for the movie panel side, Kevin Feige brought out the original director and writer, Ryan Coogler. And then he confirmed something that we talked about in a previous episode, that he's returning to direct and write Black Panther 2, which is exciting. Oh, my God, Best yes. news I heard, because I was like, you know, I, I said that about Obi-Wan Kenobi as well, but that was one of the better news I heard about Marvel, and we haven't even gotten into some really good stuff. Well, but- Ryan Coogler... Well, he was brilliant. Is a genius. He was the architect of why that film was so good. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. You know, but if you've I seen also, his other work, you But understand. I also love him as, as exactly, thank you, yeah. you know, Fruitvale Station, you know, Creed. Creed. Yeah. Um, so, 
the fact that makes he, sense. Yes, yes. I mean, you have to bring him back for the second one. Yeah, to th- write and direct. I think Marvel's understanding that sometimes the directors that first take on these uh, heroes, their first films, like you know Scott Derrickson, we'll be talking about in the next episode. He's coming back for Doctor Strange too. It makes sense, it's just like in the Russo brothers to direct. Uh, the Civil last War. two Captain Americas and then the last two adventure yes. films. It made Winter sense. Soldier, so, yes. Yeah, very sad about Ryan Coogler. I can't wait to see where his story goes. I just asked, don't bring back Killmonger because that's dumb. Yeah, that chip is I don't think he's going to do it. I think Ryan Coogler is one of those, um, he's just one of those brilliant director writer, you know, combos that's like, you know, we can't retread. We have to move forward. We have to move forward, yeah. you know, tread some new path, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited about that. But that's not all. So Kevin Feige also revealed the release date. It's arriving in theaters May 6, 2022. That's a four-year difference. Now, if you look at it, that's a Captain America First Avenger to Captain America Winter Soldier. So, I, that's a positive note. Now, I don't like waiting that long. But no. you know what? Marvel has done a good job of waiting. Like when they did Ant-Man. It took three years for Ant-Man. And Ant-Man the Lost was, was pretty good. You know, uh, I don't know if this was the decision that I thought was going to happen. I really think that Black Panther should have been out in 2021. That's what I thought. But they're really focusing on the new characters. So it seems like a lot of our returning characters are getting pushed to phase five. But Black Panther's not the only uh, film, you know, that I thought they should have fast tracked. I thought this was a 2021 release. I mean, Captain Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange, they've all been pushed to phase five. Well, Doctor Strange is in phase four, four. but, you know, You're they've right, all sorry. been kind of pushed, though, for these new characters. Or they got caught up in the Avengers thing like Doctor Strange. But yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm just like, this for sure was a 2021 film for me. That's a four-year difference. Is that okay with you? You know, I don't like waiting that long, but I feel like with Marvel, the wait is worth it. They always deliver. And even though we're waiting four or five years... It'll be worth it in the end. Yeah, I think Marvel's track record, you know, is, it's is pretty good. confidence that yeah. we, we we don't like to wait, but we'll have to wait because the results are great. But you're Especially, getting quality. Yeah, I mean, considering and that I, if you look would, at the other, you know, the you know this other comic company that makes films, you know, it, it, it's better to wait. Quality <laughs> over quantity is always yeah. better. You know, patience and and planning at a strategic level definitely improves your films, as we've seen. But yeah, so. I mean, will Submariner show up in Black Panther 2? I have no idea. I, I think, think that would be great, but I would like his own solo film. But then again, I don't know what, what the rights are with that. It's so confusing with that. I just think it's interesting that they fast-tracked Spider-Man, but they didn't fast-track this one. But that was Sony. So Sony had a... That is true. True, yeah, true, Sony true. Touche, you know, touche. Sony touché. couldn't wait. Okay. But think of it this way, though. Black Panther moves into that that slot that would be for Avengers, for Guardians, for Iron Man, Cat America... That's a big slot now. Now he's a big player. Black he's Panther's getting player. that bigger stage. He's not going to be February. They're moving that over for some other new hero. That's a big deal for him. So very exciting. Plus Ryan Coogler, that's the Ryan best part. Yeah. So oh, that is Ryan it Coogler. for the alley. We're going to head out and we're going to move over to trailer reaction. Now I'm very excited about this. I know you are. The Irishman teaser trailer dropped about a month ago, I believe, but we're finally going to talk about it. Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci's coming out of retirement. Al Pacino, they're all doing this film together. And... The director is Martin Scorsese. I mean, we're getting a gangster flick that that I don't think we've had a good gangster flick in a long time. So this is pretty ridiculous. And this is going to be on Netflix. So, Krista, what did you think of the Irishman teaser trailer? And I cannot wait for this. Well. I'm already preparing myself. My first watch, I was like, meh. That's okay. You know, not bad. Gangster flicks, not bad. Right. I'm not a big gangster flick person. Have you seen Goodfellas? No. Oh, well, we got to watch Goodfellas. That's what it I've is. I've never seen Goodfellas. I've never seen The Godfather. Um, <laughs> you know what's funny is my dad loves The Godfather, but I've never watched it. Or Casino? Have, have you seen Casino? No. Okay. Well, you seen Bugsy? Uh, yeah. I didn't really like that. <laughs> okay. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. But, so, like I was saying, my first watch, I was like, hmm, mm, okay. The, <laughs> the second watch, it was better. I don't know what it's about. Okay. So well, I don't have any connection to it. So I'm not like overly excited the way you are about it. I think it's interesting that they are digitally de aging the yeah, actors. I the think, whole movie I think that's age, what's yeah. really intriguing. I mean, I love everyone who's in it. I love Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Um, but I don't director. know what it's about. Okay. Besides it being like a gangster flick. What's also exciting is that, um, Scorsese and De Niro have not worked together since Casino. 
That's a long time. That's about 24 years, I believe. Wow. That's a while. Yeah. So this is about the story of, it looks at, it has to do with Jimmy Hoffa, which is, you know, he's, it's well famous of, you know, he was a gangster that uh, disappeared, I guess, murdered, oh, they killed and him. no one knows where his body is. Still to this day, they don't know where it's at. The so, mob. Huh? The yeah. mob. The character that De Niro's playing, which is based off a real character, is the hitman. I don't remember his name, but, you know, he had a book called I Heard You Paint Houses. So he, you know, that, because they couldn't say, what they really want to see on the phone because they're getting tapped. But that is the person I believe that killed Jimmy Hoffa. Mm, and Joe okay. Pesci's playing, who came out of retirement, which is another exciting aspect. He's playing one of the mob bosses. Overall, I mean, this looks beautiful because it's Martin Scorsese. I'll be honest with you. The de-aging thing is interesting. I saw Robert De Niro. I'm like, whoa. whoa. Now, I'm hoping that it is really good de-aging. I know they spent a lot of money on this flick, but the trailer overall, I mean, in, it's intense. Like, I'm like, what's going on? Like, I'm so excited. You know, it looks like we're getting top form De Niro, top form Joe Pesci, top form Pacino. And, and for a lot of us who love those actors, it's been a long time since we've seen like a, a movie – with them, especially Pesci, but like for De Niro or Pacino, I'm waiting for that next big film from them that kind of you know returns them to form because like they never put on a bad performance. Let me state that, but I feel like their the movies have not been the greatest. But this here is like the perfect ingredient for awards player and a great gangster flick because I love Mars Scorsese's gangster flicks. Uh, he didn't direct The Godfather, but the whole point is. He did good, fellas. It's really good. But this is going to Netflix, right? Yeah. So Netflix paid the big bucks because another studio, I don't remember what it was, had it. The price tag for the de-aging because that was one of the stipulations. Of course, yeah. like, I want to de-age all three actors so that I don't have to put um, younger actors to play them. I want them to play themselves. Yeah. So this is going on Netflix. But overall, I mean, this trailer, I w- it was so intense because the whole time I'm like, I don't know the whole story. Like Chris, is, Chris knows nothing. She's going in blind. But I know a little bit of the story. But I'm just like, what is going on? Now, is this going to tell the story? But I, I feel like it's one of those gangster flicks that you're going to be like, what's going on? And you're going to be freaked out and you're on the edge of your seat, like as if the mob's going to really come to your house. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, the trailer to me was, was pretty good, especially the whole fact that they kept saying that. I heard you paint houses. He's like, yeah, I do. So I'm like, hmm, hmm. That's interesting. But yeah, this is going to Netflix. So I do have some tidbits. Now, back in August, it was reported that Netflix was having difficulty uh, securing the Irishman to play at theaters. Because, um, especially at AMC and Cinemark, that was what was uh, in the article I read. Because those theater chains wanted the film to play for three months. It's a normal window for theater uh, movie for releases. For movies, yeah. But, you know, before arriving on Netflix. But Netflix, they don't play ball. <sighs> That's the only thing I don't like about Netflix. They never play ball. They were trying <sighs> to get the film. Like, I think they are trying to do, like, just a, a really small limited release and then get it out immediately on Netflix. Which... You know, they want to they wanna be taken serious by these awards. You got to play ball. You got to play ball. Like, yeah. you can't do, like, a limited release, like, for a week or two and then try to be considered for an Academy Award. Yeah, so they were trying to come to negotiations, I believe it was August or, you know, or yeah, and, it, you know, they're trying to work on it after, you know, negotiations broke off in July before August, Chris. So, like, this has been a process. But earlier this month, it was reported that it would play in theaters in New York and LA, and now it's not going to be every theater, it's going to be select theaters, but it arrives on November 1st, Ooh. and then it'll roll out to more theaters on November 8th, and then it's going to arrive on Netflix on the 27th of November, so it gives about a three-week exclusive window. window. Yeah, I'll take that, because I'm going to watch it. it these. I have to. Now, I heard it's about close to three hours. Oh my god. So, yeah, it's exciting. It's like a So, Vendor. I'm going to need snacks and popcorn. Because I can't sit still for three hours. Yeah. I mean, a, I mean, I thought you, I was like, Chris, was, I, in my mind, when I saw the trailer, I'm like, Chris is going to like this because it's like Pesci's back. It's it's you, intriguing. I just don't know what it's about. You got De Niro shooting people. Like, he throws a guy out of a diner and starts, like, straight, shoots him up. He looks great. Look. I was like, what Ooh. is going on? Like, you could never do that now. But I'm like, in no. that time? In that mean, time, scary, it, yeah. it was different in that time. So, yeah, it's coming out November 1st in New York and L.A., November 8th is going to roll out to more theaters and it's going to be on Netflix on the 27th. So All right. Well, mark, basically, mark your calendars, Patrick. Yeah. Basically, if you can't go to the movie theater, you're one of those people. There's some people out there which I don't agree with, but yeah, you know, it's just because I'm a huge movie fan. But even they though prefer it's to watch it at home. Yeah. And like, well, no, it's like, well, if it's going to be on Netflix, I don't have to go to the movie theater, but it's like, this is a movie you need to see in theaters. So I will be watching it. And then on, I think this, the 27th is probably a Black Friday. I'll be watching it again. So very excited. Love that trailer. I can't wait for the official trailer. So let's move over to Funko News. Funko. 
So first up in the Funko news is looks like it was originally coming soon when we we're going to talk about it, but it looks like it's already out in, in stores. But Adam's Family, the new animated film, is getting pops. Chris, how excited are you for this? Um, I hope it's good. The pops look fantastic. The pops they look, look just like, like the, the movie. We yeah. gotta do a trailer reaction before that comes out. So what do we got up here? We got Gomez. Gomez. And then I always forget the names. Morticia. Morticia. Wednesday. Pugsley. Uncle Fester. Lurch with Thing. Pretty awesome pops. Pretty awesome. I mean, what and do you think of the new design of the of the Adams Family with the anime? They're a little different um, than the one we saw. They in the, are in the a little early 90s. different. They are. I like Gomez. Um, Gomez is Wednesday. interesting. I love Wednesday. Um, I love that her braids kind of look like rope. Yes, I was gonna tell you. That, yeah. <laughs> um, Pugsley's a little pudgy with you know a crop top going on, um, but they literally look identical to the animated film that's coming out. Yeah, I- I'm excited for them. I want to get them, but I-, I I don't know if I'm gonna like the movie. So that's my worst fear. Is yeah, I'm gonna, gonna hold off on these. Yeah, unless I like the movie, then I'm gonna have to go. F- Crazy and try to find them. Now, another pop that was recently available but sold out really quick was the Loch Ness Monster, which is a Funko Shop exclusive, which I bought too because Chris and I, I could not share. I'm a huge Loch Ness Monster fan. If anybody knows me, I was always fascinated by it. I don't believe it's real, but the thought of it sounds cool. But Funko, of course, had to make it super adorable because it's it not going to look like that. It is super adorable. How excited were you when I ordered? I actually, you know, it's, you, I actually wait, 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 wait. You know what's really funny though is I was looking at my bank account. And then I went look I'm out at, of money. And then I went to go look at my credit card statement. I used and, the wrong card. And I go over to Patrick and go, Hey, did you order two? He goes, No. I thought I only ordered one. He's like <laughs> And I go, Well, I got charged one on my credit card and then one on my bank account. He's like, Huh. Well, oh, I think I used the wrong card. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay, well, let's wait for it to clear. If it isn't clear, I'm so at the complain. Both cleared. Then then they both cleared. I go, Hey, they both cleared. I can't wait to open it. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, I, I decided to buy you one, too, with your money. <laughs> I was supposed to use my money, but I guess I used the wrong. That happens with the Amazon pick, because you're so worried that, uh, that if you've never done the Funko Shop, it, you know, you can put the, the item in your cart, and then you have, sometimes it shows, like, several lines, and it's, like, waiting to check out. So you're nervous, because you could you could have it in your car, and it could sell out. So I was probably rushing and was not paying attention to my Amazon pay, but what do you think about the pop? I mean, it's adorable. It's adorable. I, I can't, we're doing Is a video for something? it soon. Yeah, I have, like, a, like a leaf Aww. coming out of the mouth. It's yeah. so cute. I love that, because I have a Bigfoot from Emerald City Comic Con. I think those myths are really interesting. Now, let's talk about some coming soon. Let's talk about Spyro. Spyro's game pops. Chris, you remember that video game? Yes, I never played it, though. Never played it, but it looks interesting, right? It's a little it, you know, That's purple that purple dragon. dragon, right? Yeah, I figured you like it because you like the color purple and, you know, who doesn't like dragons? So, let's talk about the first pop. It's Spyro. That looks cool. You never played them? Oh, they're really cool no. games. So, what do you think of the pop, though? It, it looks like the game. Yeah. It, I mean, it they did a good job it, on Yeah, that. it doesn't look too different from the game. I feel like you would own that one because you like, you like dragons. And you're like, you I know, don't play it, so I don't know. But yeah. I, I would collect them. I, I don't have any connection them, to them, so I don't really want them. I just them. wish I – I think I can play them all. I think they remastered them. We should play them again because I think you would like it. It's not one of those those what you call technical games that I oh, play good. now. Oh, good. Is it like one of those for like fr- friendly ones? Well, yeah. It's like – listen, old school, like PlayStation games. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then let's see what else here. We got two more people. We have uh, we have the antagonist and the generally unpleasant uh, Ripto. And then the final boss, Nasty Nork, I believe it is. It's been a long time since I played Spyro. But yeah, you're right, Chris. I look at these and I kind of vaguely remember uh, the villains. And they look really good. Like They did a really good job, especially with the um, the guy at the end, the final boss. He looks like he could have been a Space Jam. He could have been part of the Monstars. And he yeah. just probably got left out on the team while he's holding the what looks like a Thor's hammer kind of thing. And then the middle boss just looks like a little wimp. <laughs> just a wimp who's like, I got no powers, but I'm going to try to beat the little purple dragon. But that that's pretty cool, Pops. I don't know when those come out. We'll find out. But um, I'm not even talking that mic. Excuse me. I'm embarrassing here. And let's move over to uh, a new wave of Avengers Endgame Pops are coming out, Chris. So I know you can talk about oh, those. Oh, yes. So go ahead. First off, I want all these Pops. My separate from yours. We're not sharing So I mean we're going to have to get sets. Yeah. So first up, we have Captain America holding the hammer and his shield, but his shield is half broken. Yes. Oh, and he has moment. that like that that new thing that Funko is doing with that thunder and power underneath yeah, them. Mirror. Um so that is and he's all scuffed up too. So that is pretty freaking cool. 
Next up is Spider-Man in his kill mode. Instant kill mode. Instant kill, excuse me. And this is going to be one where he's hanging, so he's going to be kind of like hanging up on that thing. Oh. He has the gauntlet. Oh, that's right. He has his hand out with his signature Spidey move, and then he has the little crawler things, and his eyes are red. It's kind of sad that he's not in the MCU anymore. Yeah. Next up is we have Dr. Hulk, (laughs) and he's in his casual attire with a cardigan and a white tee and jeans, glasses, but he's holding the two tacos, like when he gives Ant-Man a taco. that's pretty funny. That's hilarious. Next up, a fan favorite, Korg. And Korg has his headphones, his controller, and his Hawaiian, Hawaiian attire. Cool. Now, I kind of wish, I kind of wish Meek was with That's him. That's what I said to you. The first time I saw him, a pizza. That yeah. that would have been perfect. I remember we first saw you. You're so jacked. I'm like, where's Meek? But I'm just laughing because it's like, hey, Thor, well, that guy's back on lawn. That one that was bothering you. Hey, you guys won't pass what to the war fight? Like it's so funny. Like I'm not <laughs> even doing the voice right, but it just cracks me up. <laughs> so next up, we have Thanos in his casual attire, and his face is. Uh, messed up. It's like he, a case of the Mondays. He has the gauntlet, <laughs> but the gauntlet doesn't have the stone. So this is from the uh, beginning of the movie. Yeah, I love this. I love this. Then we have casual Thor. Thank you. Yes. Fat Thor. It's casual Thor. In his flannel pants. It's casual Thor's day. He doesn't have a <laughs> shirt. No shirt. He has a, that big old gut. <laughs> And the pizza. Yeah, that's funny. And what's the last one? My favorite, Captain Marvel with her short hair. And same thing with this one. That new her powers. You can see the, that yeah. new thing that Funko's doing with the little lightning bolt. So she's channeling her powers. And that's this it. one should be a glow in the dark, in my opinion. But who am well, I? I love that wave. Who am I? Yeah, I love that wave. I think that's a really good wave. I, I definitely want every pop. There's not one pop I don't want. But I th- want yeah. the whole wave. And we're going to my favorite. Sets. I would say that would be my favorite. So let's um, move over to what about yeah. yours before I end? I know, rude. Don't even ask me. me. Chris, what was your what favorite? Am I doing here? Um, Captain Marvel's my favorite. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't blame you. So let's move over Is to. Is that why you didn't ask me? No, I don't know why I didn't ask you. I think I was ready to move over to New York <laughs> Comic Con exclusives. New York Comic Con. Because we're still catching up. I want to get these all done before uh, it drops Comic-Con. next weekend. So, first up is Disney. Chris, you want to talk about the two pops here? Yes. This one's interesting there's, now. There's some controversy with the first one. Mm-hmm. So, the first one is Mickey. And he is in the Matterhorn ride. Yeah. With part of the with part of the ride and the rails underneath him, now this was supposed to be a fifteen hundred limited piece, mm. and according to Dis Pops, they just showed what the pops going to look like with the box, and there's a Disney Park exclusive sticker. Yeah, we well, said it's like an error, so we're trying to figure out: is this New York Comic Con? Is this Disney Parks? So regard- there's a possibility this might not be a New York Comic Con, or it might. I'm hoping it's not, and it's a Disney park exclusive, yeah, so I can go to Disneyland stuff, and yeah. get it. Because we just went to Disneyland, <laughs> and yeah, we got a video coming out soon. But yeah, that's a really cool pop with Mickey. I, I definitely think that they should make Mickey into a film again. Like, we were talking about this at Disneyland. Why we is were Mickey, talking about this, yeah. Why isn't Mickey Mouse back in the like animated feature film thing? Because I think he's he's like the most recognized pop culture thing in, in the world. I'm like... It, they would make more money if they made him into, you know, they made another Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Goofy and all them. But anyways, I'm glad. So next up, we have Donald Duck. Oh, yeah. I forgot Donald Duck. And yeah. he is in a firefighter. Now, I believe that both of these, well, definitely Donald Duck is a New York Comic Con exclusive. Yeah. Donald is exclusive a New York Comic Con. Yes, so yes, yes. Moving over to Pixar. So I find it interesting that this is the only pop. Oh, sorry. There's two. Excuse me. But this is the only pop currently going to box lunch. Yeah. It's going to be the house from up with the balloons coming out of the chimney and Kevin, the bird. This is going to be a retail at $50 and a box lunch exclusive. So I, Kevin comes separately from that. They house? come together. But like he'll be separate. He won't be yeah. connected to the so house. So it's going to come in one box, but, but we're no, going to have no. the house and then Kevin. I need to get this one because I didn't get the Ellie and Carl two pack. I, I got it for you and I'm like shooting myself in the foot for not getting it. Oh, Patrick. This one's super creepy. And I did not like these characters in Toy Story 4. Oh, the dummies. But we have the... the one, well, one of the dummies. One yeah. of them. I don't know. The, I forgot their names. He looks like Slappy from Goosebumps, right? He looks creepy. No, but you remember Slappy from Goosebumps, right? No. The little, the little doll that comes alive. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he looks exactly verbatim. Yeah, I don't know if this is one that's going to be flying off the shelves. I don't think anybody was like, I need the dummy pops from Toy Story 4. I think they should have made uh, a Duke Kaboom pop of him... <sighs> On the motorcycle, yeah, that would have been, been cool, and, and made yeah. that a pop ride. Oh, oh yeah. my god, 
I loved watching Daria on MTV as a kid. Wasn't she originally in King of the Hill? Was she? Or no, I think she might have. Yeah, she might have been in King of the Hill and spinned off into her own. Yeah, I think uh, in her own series. I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember. Him I going didn't to, like, watch college. King of the Hill, so oh, I wouldn't me. know. I am wrong. Beavis and Butthead. That's where she started. She was originally in Beavis and Butthead. Mm, okay. But yeah, what's this is a really cool pop. This is a really cool pop. She's in her iconic attire with her glasses, her arms crossed. Um, this is gonna be a GameStop shared exclusive. Getting it. Getting them all. So next up. From the office. This one has not been revealed yet of which door is going to get it or if it's going to be a NYCC. Box lunch. Box lunch, you think so? Yeah. Okay. So we have Dwight Schrute holding his Dwight Schrute bobblehead and his hand up in a fist. And according to Patrick, this will be going to box lunch. But That's there's, a really cool pop. There's no word just yet. It looks it's exactly go. similar to the Pez pop, but I love it because it's like a little mini Dwight with a Dwight. Oh, it's so dope. And the next up is the Samurai Jack. It's so funny. We were talking about this in the car. I called it Samurai Sam's because I was hungry and I realized that it's Samurai Jack. But Samurai Jack 2-pack. This one is going to go to... GameStop, I thought, right? No? No. We have no idea where this is going. This one, we don't know yet where it's going to okay. go. So, it's the same with Dwight. I don't remember this show as much. I watched it a few times. You know, you're getting two characters. I wish I could tell you the two characters' name. I don't Samurai remember. Jack is one of them. Well, I know Samurai Jack's one of them. I don't know the other character, but they look really cool. Pop. I remember watching... Wasn't this on Cartoon Network? Uh, yes. Yeah, it was a really good show. I just don't remember it. And, I, and it's one of those shows that I, I, I wish I watched more often because it was actually pretty enjoyable. But moving on. Is that it? All that right. is the end, That is I think. it for right now. Yeah. Right, so that is it. So I think the thing that's really interesting with, with the New York Comic Con stuff- Is they're getting more than San Diego. Is they're getting more than San- Are they? Yeah, I think so. Is it? It's kind of last minute, where's everything going to go kind of thing, which is a little different. Uh, normally by now, we know where everything's going. Yeah. So it, it's, it's interesting um, that as of now- there's still a couple of pops up in the air that we don't know where they're going yet. And the Dwight and the Samurai Jack 2-pack are two of them. We don't know. Pat's saying that Dwight's going to go to box lunch. Well, they have no exclusives, so it makes sense for them to go. True, true, true. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. But uh, overall, I would say from the New York things that we talked about, I would definitely say that Disney and Pixar... Daria, basically everything there, you know, all the, I can't really, it's really hard to nail them down, but I would probably have to say that the Disney Pixar office and Daria would be my, would be my top grabs. I definitely will get the Samurai Jack. It's just a really cool pop because of the fact that, you, you know, I don't know if you pointed that out, but they look exactly like the animation. Funko's getting really good at making them look, well, keeping that Funko signature, but they, they really look like they're from the show. Yeah, that's true. That's a really true. good job. So. But overall, I mean, Endgame was a really cool wave, too. So that is it for Funko News. Now, let's move over to some breaking news that I got earlier, right before we recorded. It's like, like, I think about an hour or two before we recorded, so I had to switch things around. But Star Wars news. I am going to be talking about The Mandalorian with Krissa, hopefully next episode. I will be talking about Rise of Skywalker at the following episode, so we can get that D23 trailer out. But this here... Had to replace them all because this is breaking news. Marvel Studios, the man in charge, Kevin Feige, it broke the internet, is developing a Star Wars film. That is awesome. Wow. I was like, what? Kevin Feige, you heard that correctly, is developing a Star Wars movie. Now, how this happened? He pitched he pitched a movie to Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy, Disney CEO, Bob Iger and his studio chairman or co-chairman, excuse me, Alan Horn and Alan Bergman, and they must have loved it. Well, I'm, I assume so since he's doing so well with Marvel that he's a huge Star Wars fan. So he has he must have an idea of what he wants to do. That they're like yes. So he is developing a film now. Kevin Feige, I don't know if you know this, Chris, but he's a huge Star Wars fan. I think it's pretty well documented because he uses Easter eggs of arms getting cut off as a tribute to Star Wars and yes. Marvel films. Now, the Hollywood Reporter inquired about this. And uh, Walt Disney Studios co-chairman and chief creative executive – or chief creative officer, excuse me, Alan Horn, uh, basically confirmed the news in a report that it made sense for Kevin Feige to show up and work on a Lucasfilm uh, property, and it would be Star Wars. So that's pretty exciting, right? 
Now, you remember the rumor a couple, I think it was last year or maybe, I think it was last year after Solo that there was rumors that Kathleen Kennedy was going to get, uh, they're going to let her go after her contract ended or she was going to be fired after Solo's disappointing box office and that Kevin Feige would be the one to take over, you know. And I think you and I were both like, I don't know if that's the right move. I love Kevin Feige. I think he's better off in Star Wars. I don't think Kathleen Kennedy should be fired because I feel like she has done a really good job with Star Wars. I don't know about you. I think she's done a pretty good – Solo was was hard. No matter what, Solo faced a lot of odds. Even though you can't tell him the odds, he did face a lot of odds. You said a lot in that sentence, so I'm going to try to jump in. Um, I don't think Kathleen Kennedy should go anywhere. Well, she, she renewed it for three years. So. Um, Just because I think she's done some great things with Star Wars, despite what the Star Wars fans say, the Disney Star Wars Last sucks. Jedi is king. No, it, it, it really is it's not. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Lies. Um, but no. I think it's interesting. <laughs> no. I think it's interesting that Kevin Feige is coming over to Star Wars. But that makes me a little nervous because I would prefer for him to keep himself in Marvel at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you know, nothing lasts forever, but what he's done with Marvel, I would think... Is astonishing. But this also lets me know that this may not come out for a long time. Good. They're, they're mapping out the next Star Wars films. Yeah. We already know that the Game of Thrones TV creators are... Their trilogy's next. Oh, 2022, 2024, 2026. We know that Ryan Johnson is working on his... Trilogy, that's exciting. We don't really know what's going on outside of that. We know there's a lot of live action that's going to be going to a live action series, excuse me, that's going to be going to Disney Plus. We don't really know what's going on with the film world. So, you know, Kevin Feige's got a busy two years. He's got a huge phase four slate, which we haven't even got through all of it. And, you know, we know that there's some phase five in the works. So, when this would exactly happen is the million dollar question, you know, but do I see Kevin Feige? doing well or you know translating his success and his knowledge that he's done with marvel and applying it to, to star wars yes. hell yeah hell yeah and while you're at it you know if kevin Feige wants to d- develop this bring on the russo brothers too yeah i want to see a oh, russo brothers kevin yeah. feige star wars good. film or i'll be honest with you i want to see a ryan coogler oh <gasps> you know i said this in an interview with janisha adam Ginny, who played the dora milaje and okoya stunt double in the f- in the first black panther film that i think ryan coogler would be great in star wars now i read also and i don't think i had it on my notes Something I heard a rumor, you know, when this was, you know, from this report that, you know, Kevin Feige told a big Marvel star that he had a role for them in mind if he ever did a Star Wars, you know, movie. And looks like that's, you know, whoever that is, is going to be getting a role. Now, I would put bets on that it could be probably the main three. Hemsworth, uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan, Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans. Those would be my three. But yeah, this is exciting. Kevin Feige doing a Star Wars film because... He's a huge fan, and I'd love to see what he could do with Star Wars. Can he replicate the success he's had with Marvel and do it again with Star Wars? I think he can, you know. But the question is, is where does he fit this in his schedule? Yeah. He's got a long slate. Is he going to be passing on some? Maybe, maybe he might pass on the baton for a little bit to work on Star Wars to another person in Marvel Studios, you know, or he's going to be doing double duty. I mean, Kevin Feige can probably do it. He's bounced out a lot of films. But their their slate for this phase four it's it's in two years. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot. Yeah. So I'm curious. But this is exciting news for any Star Wars fan. You know, you want the right people working on Star Wars. Now, this is where it gets really funny. Is he's a lifelong Star Wars fan. So was Ryan Johnson, and people didn't like his movie. You know, so what's gonna happen to Kevin Feige? You know what I mean? True. Um, I think Kevin Feige would be fine, and Kevin Feige we trust. Yeah, I know everyone's saying that, but. I'm excited because he's a creative force that loves... That's the thing about Star Wars that I think is different from Marvel. And I know that um, I might come off as biased, but I feel like most people... And I think it is true, though. Most people that work on Star Wars love Star Wars. They want to be there. Like, Marvel is a great opportunity. Not a lot of them read the comics, but they're a fan of of the movies or the characters, and they fall in love with them, and they do them. You know, does that make sense? Where Star Wars is like, you love Star Wars. That's why you're doing it, you know? So this is exciting. Though I would really like to hear that John Favreau would be maybe John Favreau could finally direct a Star Wars movie. Ooh. That is intriguing. But Kevin Feige's pitch, whatever he pitched, must have been so good that they're like, here, they just threw the money at him. Like, you already have money, but here's more money. Like, we want you to do a Star Wars movie. Yeah, I wonder where this goes. Will he bring back original characters? I don't think so. I think it's gonna be a whole new original Star I think Wars. Be a whole new. And that'd be kind of cool for him because then he doesn't have much well, what am I saying? No matter what, Kevin Feige Star Wars movie is going to have 
so much hype and anticipation. It's going to have high it's gonna expectations. Be, it's going to be, yeah. I mean, you're hoping. But here's the thing. I hope that we're not going in there thinking we're going to get a Star Wars or like a Star Wars Marvel movie. I don't no. want that to feel Marvel. I want it to be something new and original. And I think Kevin Feige's up to the task. But that's exciting for Star Wars fans, Marvel fans, just in general, movie fans. We're getting a quality um, Star Wars movie. Not th- not to say that we haven't got any, but this is one of the more exciting uh, people that work in film. You know, a creative genius like him getting this film is probably the best thing I've heard. Because I'll be honest with you, Chris is not that excited about the Game of Thrones creators. I'm not as well. But when I hear Kevin Feige, that's, you know, my ears perk up like a dog. Like I heard some, like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. that's really good news. So, very exciting about that. I mean, what do you think? I mean, whatever he pitched must have been gold, right? I'm excited to learn more about this. I just want to make sure that Marvel doesn't, you know, fall behind. Yeah. Uh, well, put I'm, on the I'm back pretty planner. sure that, that Disney's like, can you do this? And he's probably like, yes. And they're going to be like, okay, well, we trust you. Like you said, in Kevin Feige, we trust. So, we'll keep tabs on it. But that is huge, huge breaking news. So... That is not all. We have a movie review. Normally, we would end the episode. Why? I don't know why I say that, because we normally never end the episode. But we're <laughs> going to review The Farewell. Now, The Farewell stars Aquafina, which you might remember her from her scene-stealing performance in Crazy Rich Asians. And the synopsis for The Farewell is, A Chinese family recently learns their grandmother is dying. Instead of telling her the truth, they lie by faking a wedding to visit her. Now, normally, as I said earlier with our ReZero review, but we do spoiler-free, spoiler section, final thoughts and rating. Chris of the Farewell star in Aquafina, spoiler-free section. Take it away. There are certain films that you watch and you walk out and you're like, wow, that movie was breathtaking. Endgame, Infinity War, Inception. Peanut Butter Falcon. The Peanut Butter Falcon. <laughs> Chris doesn't want me to say that, but I'm just saying those are some films of, of the last couple of years that have really taken the world by storm. And there's other films like The Farewell that are... Breathtaking. Beautiful. Okay, boom. I love That's them. what I want to hear. So. Um, A24 is one of my favorite production companies. Um, I like to watch almost all of their movies. You're telling some great stories, by the way. Phenomenal stories. And when I first saw the trailer for, for The Farewell, it starts off with this is a story based on a lie. And right there, just like, I, my I start interest. chuckling. I'm like, what is this about? What? It this, looks like a sad movie, like when you see the trailer, yes, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this movie is heartwarming, touching, a little bit of a tearjerker at some parts. Um, but You're I feel crying. like, I feel like it's, I, I, I started oh, crying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's universally relatable in dealing with family and it goes across all cultures. But definitely I love this movie. I feel like the acting felt so authentic and I felt like I was a part of their family and I went along on their journey with them. Aquafina, I feel like put on her best performance thus far in her yes. career. Yes. To where I really want to see her tackle more roles like this. I mean, she has phenomenal timing with her humor. But I feel like this was something different, and it was just so vulnerable and so beautiful that it was a movie I had to see again in theaters before it left. We've seen this twice, so we yes. saw it like last a month, month. ago. We watched it again last yeah, week. Yeah, because we, we got so busy with our move that we didn't review it, and I don't like to review movies unless we had it fresh in our minds. So for me with The Farewell, this is easily one of the best films of the year. Like, And trust me, you know we love the blockbuster films, but this film is easily one of the top five, top ten, maybe top three films. We don't know. You know, there's so many good films that are still coming out, so I cannot wait. But this film definitely solidified Aquafina, who, you know, I didn't really watch Crazy Rich Asians. I've seen parts of it with Chris. I don't really ever sit down and watch it. I would like to. I know she was a scene stealer in that, and I know she was in Ocean's 8 as well, and she did really good in that. But yeah, this solidified her as a leading actress. Like, I... Definitely thought she was fantastic in this. She put on a very um, a very vulnerable performance. I feel like she was very relatable because of the fact that I wouldn't know what to do in that situation. If my grandma was dying and you know they, f- they don't even tell her, they just fake a wedding to visit her, that's interesting with me because that conflicts with how I would handle that situation. So watching Aquafina play her character, which was, I believe, her uh, Billy. There you Billy. Go. Her name was Billy. Yeah, seeing Billy dealing with that stuff, that was that was a little bit of uh, one of some of the best aspects, but it was really hard to. I, I think definitely for you, you were in – this is definitely a feels movie, so you were definitely feeling it. But I, I really like it. 
But at times it was hard to get through because my emotions, I got a little emotional. I was like, you know, it gut punches you sometimes. You're like, what is going on? Like, Billy, say something. Like, you know what I mean? Cause like, in my opinion, just because of the way I, you know, just the way I, where I come from, I, I would have told my, my grandma, but you know, this is a different, this is a different perspective and this is a different, like, um, the way they handle things, different cultural experience, which I thought was actually kind of enlightening in a sense. Cause I was like fascinated that, that instead of like, um, and I don't know if this is, is this a spoiler if I say this, but like, you know, like in this one, you know, they don't, you know, in, in the culture, they don't, they don't tell the person if they're, if they're dying or not. Is that a spoiler? I kind of like a little bit of what you said was spoiler, but you're, you're okay. 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 Yes. But uh, yeah, it's very touching. It's very funny, but it's, it, it's very honest, brutally honest, but it, it does a very good job of, of, uh, masking that, that brutal honesty with some really funny humor. Like I was dying a lot in this movie and it's not, a comedy. It's a dramedy. So that's what I would say would uh, wrap up my spoiler free section. So that is it for the spoiler free section. So we're going to move over to spoiler section. Now I'll give you three seconds. And as always, Chris will go ahead and start spoiling it away. And away we go. So spoiler section for the farewell. I might have already spoiled a little bit, right? Yeah, the, I think you might have just a little but bit. They, okay. But you're right; they said it in the trailer, they so did. I feel like, uh, they did. yeah, what am yes, I? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, for me, we follow the story of Billy, this young Chinese girl who's living in New York, trying to find herself, trying to get into. Uh, looks like she's trying to get into a program. Yes. Yeah. And she's very close with her grandma, and they talk every day from China. Nai nai. Nai nai. Yes, which what she calls her. And she has a very interesting relationship with her parents. Um, it it kind of reminds me of my relationship with my parents. I don't have the best relationship with my parents. And sometimes we don't see eye to eye on things or my mom's being harsh, but it's to teach me something. Um, and so I kind of felt Billy was very re- relatable to me. And it, they discover that the grandma has cancer. Stage four lung cancer. Yeah, that's a bad beat. Yeah. But they don't tell her. And so they organize a wedding. They fake a wedding with her cousin. With her cousin. Her only cousin. How, how? No one tells Billy. Yeah, it was a <laughs> because, yeah, it was because a Billy her. can't hide her emotions. And they know if they bring her along, she, she won't be able to contain herself and because, she'll ruin it. Yeah, because she's, you know, she moved to America when she was really young. She's become. You know, Americanized. She's, yeah, she's become Americanized. So in her mind, she's like, we have to tell them. But in their culture, they don't tell them because yes. they want to spare them the emotional Which and physical pain. I kind of felt like Billy. What they're doing. Because <laughs> that's something my, my family yeah. would do to me. I relate to Billy because I feel like I would be the same way. I was like, they should tell her. They should give her that, that, um, you know, that benefit. I felt like Billy because my family would do that to me where they wouldn't tell me they were the reason why they were really going on a trip. And I'd be the last to know about things, which happens to me all the time, actually. But Billy goes around them and decides to go to China anyways. And she shows up at the front door and I started crying at this part, not because the scene was emotional, just for me, it triggered some emotions for me. Um, I was very close to my grandma and she passed two years ago. And the way the grandma responded to Billy walking in the door was like, Jesus walked the door. And it kind of reminded me of how my grandma would respond to me when I would come over. It's kind of like, oh my goodness, you're here. You know, what a surprise kind of thing. And so like out of nowhere, I just started crying. And Patrick's just like, whoa, whoa. and I think I, I think we had tissues from the popcorn coming. So I was like crying. I'm like, oh my God, I'm already crying in this movie. But it's not as sad as you think it is. But you feel the internal conflict because Billy is so torn because she wants to comply with what her family is asking of her. But she also, this is her chance to tell her grandma what's really going on. And doesn't, she's essentially saying goodbye because not like grandma lives down the street. Grandma lives across yeah, the world. Yeah, she's in China. You're in New York. Yeah, it's a big. You know what a, I mean? It's a long and so journey. You, you you really you really do go on this ride with Billy, and you really feel like you're part of the family because that is a very hard thing to do. Um, do you comply with your family and their requests of not telling your grandma, or do you do you tell her? And then if you do tell her, you have to deal with the repercussions of it. And it was frustrating because every her uncle kind of repetitively said, "Don't blow it." Oh, Uncle Don't Hyman. tell him. 
Yeah. Yes. And to the point where I was getting irritated. And I think I would have told him off if he was mine. Just because I get it. Yes, I know I can't have my emotions. Yes, I know I have no poker face. Yes, I know I'm not supposed to tell her. Yes, I know this is this is part of the culture. But I'm telling you, this is my nai-nai. And I'm not feeling good lying to her and hiding this from her. But the grandma knows. The but the grandma knows that something's wrong. You think so? I don't know if that's entirely true. Yes, because she's like, you don't look okay. What's wrong with you? Oh, and I thought she's you were like, saying like the, the, that Nai Nai didn't know that she. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Nai Nai knows there's something wrong with Billy. Billy's not yes, being honest yes, with yes. her. Yes, that that is true. Yes, retract um, my statement. Yes, yes, yes. I thought you were saying that the grandma didn't knew she was sick. I don't. I don't think she knew. But this is. I mean, it ends up being a happy ending. But you don't but, really know that it's an happy yes. ending. Like the whole time you're, I'm. I'm I was thinking she's gonna die. I was Jedi conflicted. Like I didn't know. <laughs> if I, like I was like, when she felt, when she felt sad, uh, you know, for her grandma Nai Nai, I felt sad for her. Like I felt those emotions that she was feeling. Like I was right there. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Which is a great job. You know, that's a, a huge testament. Excuse me to the director writer Lulu Wang. She did a really good job with this. But go ahead. I think the other thing that's really interesting about this film is this is not in English. It's primarily, I believe it's Cantonese. I, I'm not entirely sure what the language. I'll be honest with you. I know it's it's one of the languages in China, but yeah, I, it might be Cantonese. But yes. Maybe it's Mandarin? It, maybe. It might be. I'm yeah. not sure. But it's not in English. There are subtitles. But it's not always, it's not always uh, in a different language. It does have, uh, they do use English, you know, but just toward the majority of the film, yeah, they do it toward the end, in the middle. But I think the other thing that makes it interesting is you get to see family dynamic that is universal. These are things that you see in all families, in all cultures, where the parents are essentially bragging about their kids, but being a little... A little ridiculous about a li- it. Exaggerating to... Exacerbating, like exa- you would say. Oh, yes. Thank you. They're yeah, exacerbating. Using your word that you love to use. <laughs> Um, but of one of the one of the things that kind of like irritated me was um, there's a part in this movie where the mom's talking about America and how great America is, and they're talking about investing in your kids and and how fast can you become a billionaire in America, and it it it, it hurt me, but at the same time it was relatable for me. Mm. Where her mom essentially said that Billy was a bad investment. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was really awkward at dinner. Just because Billy's in a part of her life right now where She's in, like, she went flux. to college. She's trying to get herself together, but she's not getting where she needs to be despite her college education. And she's washing clothes at her parents. She's going to eat her parents and her Can't mom. Pay her rent. Exactly. And so to hear that when you're already down in your luck and then hear your parents say that you're a bad investment, that's like kick me when I'm down kind of thing. And so you really do sympathize with Billy. But at the same time, her mom isn't an awful person. It's just she some- says awful things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I, I feel sometimes with parents, I think it's hard to be a parent because every decision you make can shape the person as to who they are. But tough love isn't always the right way, in my opinion. And so for me, I felt this movie was just relatable. <laughs> um, but I, I love, I love, 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 love the emotional connection with Billy and her grandma, her Nai Nai. I, I can ramble all day, Patrick. What, yeah, what do you have I to mean. Say? Yeah, I mean, Nai Nai was, you know, was awesome. Like she was a scene stealer. She, she really. I feel like she kind of breathed in a lot of the, the, you know, the happy moments of the film. She was really fun because, you know, despite all of us knowing that she has this cancer and that she may not have, she may not have much time to live, you know, she was basically the, the life vessel for the family and life vessel for the film because, you know, like I said, she really was interesting because she's the one that needs all this attention and care because she's going through, you know, a sickness, but yet she's really there to help Billy kind of re rediscover herself, rediscover why she's on the path that she's in. So I was really uh, invested in that, but I really like Nina. She was cracking me up. How, how, you know, when she was you know showing Billy how to, you know, do this ritual that she does that, that, sh- that is in her mind has helped her um, attain this perfect level of health. And I also like that she, um, 
that she cared so much about Billy and was so concerned about Billy. But yeah, Billy was like, you know, the whole time, like, I just want to spill the beans. But that was a great relationship. Her her family with her parents was really interesting because I feel like Billy didn't really belong in her family because the way they were. So, you know, that was an interesting aspect. But I, I kind of feel like, um, you know, the whole time, like, I don't know how this film's going to end. Like, I kept thinking it's going to end like this, but then I'm like, I'm not fully committed to one idea. So, they did a really good job of throwing me for a loop. I just didn't know exactly how it was going to end, but I really laughed a lot. I didn't cry. Krista cried, but I, I really, I got close to it. It was, it was really uh, really hard because, you know, I, I really, I didn't want to see Nine Eye die. Like, that the whole time, like, I really don't want to see her die. Like, you know, I, this is where I think it's going, but it didn't go there. Krista, unfortunately, took the bait and she cried. Uh, you know, you cried a lot in that movie, actually. Yeah. So she took the bait, but I didn't. But at the end of the day, it was a happy ending, which was really cool it to was, find out. It was. And it's very empowering. So, but I, I just love that. I think sometimes people don't like these type of movies because it's, it's hard to, because they relate to it or they don't like sad movies. But I sometimes think there's beauty and pain. And this film demonstrated that there was a lot of pain in this film, but there was a lot of beauty to it, especially in the fact that Aquafina put on a great performance. And the, the story was incredible. It was one that, that definitely opened my eyes to a different perspective, which I liked a lot. And that is it for my spoiler uh, section. So let's move over to final thoughts already, Chris. I think this might be my favorite movie of the year. One thing that really, really touched me is how much your grandparents mean to you and how uplifting they can be. And like I said, it's it's not your parents' fault that they're, they're trying. I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> they're trying to help you build yourself and shape you to the person you're supposed to be. But the fun part about a grandparent, their job is to encourage you and to tell you to dream and tell you if things going to be okay. And I think the thing I, I loved about her, about Billy's grandma, Nai Nai, is when they're saying goodbye and Billy's going back to New York, she stops by and she gives Billy money. And she's like, why are you giving me money? I'm not getting married. She's like, use this money. Don't do anything adult, like pay rent, pay bills. Go buy yourself something. Yeah. Because her grandma knew that she's special and that she's in a rut in her life. And she's frustrated. But if you power through that and you work through that, everything's going to fall into place. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When she, I remember there's a, in a part of the film right before that happened where she told – uh, Billy, she goes, when you get married, I'll throw even a bigger wedding. I'm like, oh, that really hurt. Cause I'm like, you know, cause you knew that she only had a few months to live, which turned out not to be true. So she's still going today, which is she's awesome. She's still going today. And they showed a, a quick little clip of it at mm -hmm. the end of the movie. But overall, I adored this movie. I am so glad we watched it twice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a truly a breathtaking film. Definitely yeah. a film I, I'm going to own. Yeah. Definitely for myself as well. I loved it. But my rating for this movie is actually a 99. 99. I mean, that's, yeah. that's almost near perfect because of wow. Yeah. So for me, this is a, you know, like I said earlier, it's a top contender for one of the best films of the year. Truly engaging experience. It's, it's one of those films that you, you kind of walk away and you're like, wow, I never thought that I would get a different cultural, um, experience that would really shape me. I really felt that this was different. Like, I'm like, wow. Also, you know, I can't stress enough, but Aquafina puts on a magnificent performance. She is one of those you got to watch. She's going to be a leading, player in Hollywood for a long time. She just is naturally funny. She's naturally gifted as an actress, and I can't wait to see what else she does. But the highlight for me was Nai Nai, the actress who played the grandma. She, you know, just her performance was how how. If you've seen the movie, you know what that means. That basically what she does in her ritual that makes her feel good and of good health. But yeah, just it was just one of those... Uh, you know, despite I don't know the language, but I, I could feel every emotion that they were, you know, that, that they were uh, conveying through their, you know, their language. But I could feel it. I, you know, there was a universal understanding of okay, they're they're not happy, they're laughing. So it was a really good film. I definitely would rate this a ninety-seven. I recommend that everyone else should go watch this movie. Support great films like this. Go watch this movie because the, the you know doesn't matter if if you don't understand the language. Like you're gonna walk out of that film a different person and that's how i felt so that is it for me on the farewell and this is the end of the episode people so want to thank everyone who's tuned in if you've been on this journey with us thank you and if you are new to this podcast definitely subscribe we're available on every platform including youtube i'll throw out a few iHeartRadio, soundcloud 
uh, iTunes, Spotify. I don't even think I mentioned that, but you know, there's one called Podcoin, which pays you to listen to your favorite podcast. Definitely check that out. All those links are in the description of this episode. And Chris, I'll let you take it away with social media and website. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at TOC Movies or on Facebook at Tomorrow Comes Movies. And if you've not checked out our YouTube channel, please go check it out at youtube.com slash share Tomorrow Comes Movies. Like, comment, please. And then anything that you're looking for, go ahead and head over to our website at TOCMovies.com. You'll get links to our social media, our podcast, our Funko YouTube. Video. I just put up the TuneCon release. Check exactly. That out. Everything you need to find on Tomorrow's Movie, just head over to the website, tocmovies.com. And of course, uh, we'd like if you could rate us, right, Krissa? Yes. Which is a star rating if you're choosing on any platform that you listen to the podcast and write something. Those are the ones that count. And Krissa, real quick here, let's talk about some really cool things that they can get if they buy Funkos or T-shirts or pop protectors. Let's start with... Pop. Sick Pops and Collectibles. It is our favorite pop shop. If you are in the Southern California area, or if you're not, go to the website, sickpopsoc.com. S-I-C-C-P-O-P-S-O-C.com. And use our promo code TCM10 to get 10% off of your purchase. It is now open to everything. Not just pre-orders, not just common. Take a look at his site. You save 10%. TCM10. Go look at those grills. Yes. Big pins. Uh, Marvel Legends. I, I don't know what else he has. There. He has pretty much every collectible you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for some bomb t-shirts, <laughs> Patrick just wore one to Disneyland. He got yeah. so many comments that I'm going to add it to our new business card. You're going to want to go to onceuponatea.net. That's once upon a t t e e dot net. And each week they have collections where the shirts are thirteen ninety nine. Now, if you miss that window, the shirt jumps up to twenty one ninety nine. Oh, yeah. And you use our promo code TOC Movies to say ten percent. But Patrick had a really cool shirt where it was a mesh of Star Wars and Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. Now, if you're looking for pop protectors for your Funko Pops, definitely check out Pop Shield. Now, we have a link in the description of this episode, which I think I'll be promoting on our website as well, and that will get you some Pops. Now, it is free shipping if you're in the United States, but they have different packages like Chris and I were looking like. You can get like a real good set of bulk pop protectors for a reasonable price, and it's free shipping, so definitely check out our link in the description of this episode. And of course, in a couple weeks, uh, was it like less than two weeks? We're going to be at LA Comic Con, October 11th, 12th, two and weeks. 13th. Very excited to be there. And of course, November 10th, we're going to be at ToonCon in Pasadena, California. So we cannot wait to see you guys. If you see us, please. I have come to say stress hi. this out. Yes, please come say hi to us because. Please don't take um, a random picture. <laughs> I didn't care they took a photo. I just wish they would have came no, and said we, hi to us. We experienced something this past weekend. Where I think somebody recognized us. Yes, yes. But they did like this awkward Weird, like yes. picture. Yeah. And like, so I'm like, what WTF? You yeah. Just I mean, what just just say hi. Yeah, just say hi, please. Just say hi to us. And if you want to take a photo, all you have to do is ask. Please yes, don't treat please. us like a zoo animal. And that is it. So as always, your hosts are the Patrick and Carissa. A Reef farewell to Subaru. Episode 103. Until next time, stay tuned for another episode of Tomorrow Comes Movies. for listening guys uh this is kyle phillips i hope you enjoyed and uh hope you enjoy stuff with tomorrow comes movie